Today we're going to unbox the trail cam camera from Enclave Wildlife Hunting Camera with infrared night vision 2.4 inch LCD screen waterproof. Purchased from Amazon. I have a trial for uh, Prime, Amazon Prime. I paid $54.99 plus tax. Let's go see what's in the box. I'll start out by saying there's no brand name on the box. And regardless of what uh, megapixels and quality they talk about in the ad, the box says it's 2 megapixels, 720p for the video. The actual part number is X001J539UJ. So let's see what's in the box. Instruction manual. A simple operating instruction manual. A package of, package of uh, hardware. The camera itself. That's branded Enclove or Enclove, the N K L O V. And don't throw the box away until you see what's down in that hole. I think there's a strap down in there. Take out that cardboard uh, keeper, and you have a strap and a USB cable for downloading your pictures. So this is what we have other than packaging. USB cable, strap, hardware, the camera itself, simple operating guide, and a full instruction manual. There's a cheaper brand on Amazon and one of the biggest complaints was that there was very poor instructions that came with a camera and everybody had to sit there and figure out how to use it. I read reviews on this one, nobody complained about the instructions. First thing we're going to do is put eight AA batteries in it. So if you don't have those, get busy. I happen to have a mixture of dollar store Sunbeam alkalines and some Harbor Freights that I'll be putting in there. Battery compartment and the inside of the camera, I should say, pops right open. Still looking for the battery compartment. Hang on. Pull down this little flap here and pull up on it. There we go. Now we'll load her up. The SD slot is right here on the, underneath all these controls here. It's right here. Uh, take your uh, thumbnail and push it until it clicks and stays. Now, if you click it again, it'll pop out. That's how you know it's inserted far enough. I inserted it with the label facing up towards me. The next thing to do is either select photo, which is this button with a little camera on it, or video, which is this button. We'll select photo. See what happens. Well, yeah, what's supposed to happen? Oh, now we turn the mode switch to on. Okay, it says okay. Hang on. Uh, the mode switch is down here on the bottom. On is the whole way to the right. There's a boop. Look there. Already took a picture of a deer. Something's happening, people. It defaults to 2 megapixels. Saw that before the screen went dark. Place the product on the desk. All right. Before I do that, I'm going to put the lid back on the battery compartment so they don't spill out because you're not going to close it up while you're doing the testing. 
and because uh, you need access to the buttons, you don't want your batteries falling out. Snap that back into place. That's the only thing I got to play. I can tell you that with even on a magnifying glass, I cannot see what that says. That little box. Uh, but I did calculate that it says menu. And this is the right arrow button. Uh, so I'm going to go to the menu and set it up. So I spent a lot of time going through the instructions. And uh, all the settings are done when this button down here is in test mode. You want to open up your book to page 16 and go down through the settings one at a time. After you press menu on here, you get the same things, uh, the questions here, and how you want to answer it. You can you can read more about it over here. And then as you use this down button to go down to each one, when you get something you want to check or change, you press the OK button. And then you can uh, see what the ramifications of your selections are over here. Like if a deer walks into the picture, uh, into your frame, you want to take one picture, two, or three. And, uh, or you want to take video. And so have your book open as you're paging down through the menu. Of course, you can always come back and change it. I did some playing around, and I set mine up uh, the interval between shots real low because I'm still playing with it a couple of seconds or whatever, and to take three shots in a row. So here I am prancing around the living room, and I'm getting a shot like I'd move maybe this far. be like, one, two, three. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And now I'm going to uh, play with the hardware. The camera is functioning. After you get it all set up, you switch it to the on mode. You have about five seconds to get out of the way. It's going to take a picture of your hand or whatever. And uh, I didn't, you can't tell it's working. That's just it. You're walking around, there's no lights, there's no noise, there's no nothing. And it's made that way so you don't scare the game. But uh, uh, I had no clue whether I was taking my picture or not. So I came back, moved it into test mode, and then hit the uh, replay button. And then you always use the down button or up button to page through the pictures. And I found out it was taking pictures. But it, uh, when you're walking in front of it, you can't tell. This hardware that came with it is a rudimentary tripod for used on a flat surface or a wall. The tap hole on the camera to uh, attach the camera to it. Then you can angle it. Like if you're using it for a safety device off a porch railing or uh, that kind of thing, or if you have, I don't know where out in the woods you'd find a flat surface like that, but uh, that's what this mounting stuff is for. If you're going to put it on a tree, just use the strap. But they do sell mounting boxes, security boxes, uh, that lock onto the tree so nobody steals your camera. The mounting strap that you'd put around a tree or a fence post or whatever just goes through the back here this frame part and then bring the strap up through and then down through this last slot like that and you can pull on the short end and cinch it to a tree then to loosen it you just lift it up like that and then it'll loosen this is my cherry tree. I can't get my arms around it, so the strap's not long enough to go around it. Uh, we'll have to find a smaller tree, or I'm going to try it up there on a, one branch, but the camera might not be level, so we'll be playing around and find a tree. That camera hides on the tree pretty well. Um, I have it uh, same height as my eyes right now off the ground so it's probably about five 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 four something like that I'm five ten so we're give me four inches of forehead um, I have squirrels go right by here about every three hours and so maybe I won't be picking them up as often but I'll show you where the camera's pointing 
My garlic patch is right behind that pole. I don't know what the field of vision is going to be. And my garden's over there. And if I get any deer in the yard, they're usually up in this area. They come out of the woods over there. I get turkey up there. Uh, boy, I'd like to see a bear or a coyote. But, uh, so we're looking into that open area. Now I'm going to open it up and turn it on. Now I'm going to open it up and turn it on. Slide this switch the whole way to the right. Close it back up. It'll blink red a couple, four times. And then it's already taking a picture of my hand. <laughs> That's pointing pretty flat and level. Now I'll come out here and walk by it uh, in about five minutes. And I'll show you those pictures. And then if I remember, I'll come out tonight or tomorrow night and get some infrared pictures. And if I get any game on it, I'll show you those too. I forgot to peel this uh, protective screen off the IR thing up here. Take that off. 